Hey guys, in this video, I'll show you how to find the kinetic energy of an object indirectly, and also I'll show you how it could be found directly. What that means is, because this is an example problem, we cannot find the energy of this ball directly because we would need a sensor, motion sensor, or something so that we would know what's its velocity right here at the bottom, right? So to find the kinetic energy indirectly, we need to use energy conservation. So let's get right to the problem. A 500 gram ball is dropped from a height of 9.4 meters. Find its kinetic energy right before it hits the ground. Okay, let's start with the setup. So I already have the little sketch, okay? The student's going to drop the ball and it's gonna fall like that, okay? So I should start with my zero line. So it'll be here, okay? That means my height, it's going to go from here to here. And that's going to be my height, okay? So the ball is gonna take this trajectory and it's going to end at this location. So to find its kinetic energy, I have to think about what is the energy of the ball right before it is released? Because we are at a certain height and the ball is not moving, the only energy we have is potential. So if we were to start with the conservation of energy, conservation of mechanical energy, we would have kinetic energy, initial, plus potential gravitational energy initial. There, there's no elastic, so I don't have to include it. Is equal to kinetic energy final plus gravitational potential energy final. Let's think about the velocity of the, sphere, of the ball right here. It is zero, meaning that there is no initial kinetic energy. And right before it hits the ground, it is at the y is equal to zero line. That means its potential energy is now zero. So we have that the initial gravitational potential energy is equal to the final potential um, kinetic energy. Okay, so let's set it up. So we're going to have kinetic energy final is equal to gravitational potential energy initial. So we know the equation for gravitational potential energy. So we have kinetic energy final is equal to the mass of the ball times the acceleration of gravity times the initial height, right? Because it's initial gravitational potential energy. So when we write down what we know, We have the mass of the ball, 500 grams. And then we know the acceleration of gravity. And we know the initial height. It was 9.4 meters. Now we just have to plug in our numbers. The mass is 500 grams. That means I have to divide this by 1,000. I want kilograms. Kilo is 1,000. So this is 0 0.5 kilograms. Times 9.8 meters per second squared. I need a little bit more room. Times... 9.4 meters. I just need the calculator. So we have 0 0.5 times 9.8 
times 9.4. So the kinetic energy of this ball is 46, let's round to 46 joules. Okay, what if we wanted to know the velocity right before it hits the ground, okay? That would be the final velocity. Well, we know what the kinetic energy is in terms of joules, so now we can say, okay, the kinetic energy right before it hits the ground is 46 joules. So that means 46 joules is equal to, well, you know, before I do that, let me just do it analytically. And I also know that the kinetic energy final is going to be 1 half times the mass of the ball times the velocity final squared. I just have to solve for velocity final. I multiply times 2 to get rid of the 1 half. And then I'm going to divide by the mass. Let me show the steps. Let's divide by the mass. So we have velocity final squared is equal to twice the kinetic energy final divided by the mass, and then we just take the square root. So I'm going to get rid of the square root. There you go. That's how we find the final velocity. Let's plug in our numbers. So we have twice, I'll do the square root at the end, the kinetic energy was 46 joules, divided by the mass, which is 0 0.5 kilograms. And then we take the square root. So we have square root of 2 times 46 divided by, oh, the square root has to be, sorry, the division has to be inside the square root. 13.56 meters per second. So the final velocity is 13.56 meters per second. Let's just make sure that velocity makes sense, and then what we'll do that is let's just find the kinetic energy. So when we use the formula for kinetic energy, we should get 46 joules as the answer. Let's try it. So when we plug in our numbers, it's 1 half times 0 0.5 kilograms times 13.56 meters per second, and then the square goes outside. So 1 half times 0 0.5 times 13.56 squared. 45.96, very close to 46, close enough. 46 joules. Now the question is, how true is this? Because I am ignoring air resistance completely, correct? So to show you, I have this experiment. I use vernier analysis. So I just want you to see the velocity, 13.6, okay? So I track the motion. I have the ball being dropped. The height is 9.45, a little bit more. But now let's see the y velocity. 
11.88. So it's less than what we calculated. And that makes sense because we have a resistance and in the problem, I'm not taking that into account. So let's see how far in terms of percentages um, our answer is from the actual number, from the direct measurement of the velocity. So what we'll do, I'm going to round the velocity to 11.9, okay? So let's call this one V final experimental. And that's going to be, oh, let me move it so I have more space. That's going to be 11.9. Meters per second. So I'm going to do all the calculations again. Let's find the kinetic energy. Well, let, first let's find the, the ratio of the velocities, right? So if my velocity found experimentally was 11.9, then I divide by the theoretical or indirect measurement of velocity. So we have about 87, 88%. That means 12% of the energy maybe was transferred away due to air drag. Okay, so that's really good actually, 88%, close. Now let's see about the energy. Let's see how far we are from 46 joules. Thirty-five. So let's see, 35 divided by 46. So we got about 76% of the energy. We lost about 24% due to air drag. Again, these numbers make sense, right? We are completely ignoring air resistance here. So it makes sense that our answer is slightly different. And that's how you find kinetic energy directly. And if we have a motion sensor or video, analysis software, you can find it directly.